Okay, we're on. We'll see how this works. Um, we uh, let's see. We've got this going. We'll just keep it as it is. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hello to everybody in China or wherever you're watching this, wherever it might be. Could be in the U.S. Could be somewhere else. Maybe the Philippines. Maybe wherever, but wherever you are, hello. Um, today we're going to be talking about a lesson that we actually did um, at the end of July, but at that time we weren't doing any of the, uh, we weren't recording any of the lessons. And so uh, Ben had run into this and suggested that I do it again so that we can kind of get it on um, onto a video and maybe it'd be useful for some people. So... The lesson is about loving our enemies. Um, you know, in the Bible, we the, the, there are things that the Bible talks about that when he, he says it, it's, it, it makes perfect sense. Because there are some things that just make perfect sense to us. Like, for instance, someone says, well, you should love your mother and father. Well, okay. For most of us, we, that's not hard. That's not hard. We we figure that out. Like, yeah, that's right. That's a good thing. You know, I should love my child. Okay, that's a good thing. You know, that that that's not a hard command. That's not a difficult thing for most of us to deal with. But then there comes certain things that God calls on us, and it's not easy for us because we, even though we're created in the image and likeness of God, there are things about God that are so much better than we are. And so God is able to look at things sometimes in a way that even though the, we, we have the capacity for it, we have the ability to do these things because we were created in his image and likeness, it's still not easy for us. This is one of those things, in my opinion, okay? And that's this idea of loving your enemies. Now, for most of us, uh, we think, well, we love our friends and we hate our enemies. And that's how most of the world thinks. And if you were to talk to, take a hundred people off the street and you were to say to them, uh, you know, you know, how should I treat my enemies or, or should I love my enemies or hate my enemies? Most people, unless they're Christian or have some other reason to think differently and say, well, you should hate them. Love your friends, hate your enemies. And they're not gonna, you're not gonna get a lot of debate with it. So if you want to take the position that I should hate my enemies, you're probably gonna get a lot of support. You're gonna get a lot of people out there that are gonna agree with you, and, and they're gonna make it real easy for you to do it wrong. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So then we say we hate the evil, but we love the enemy. Okay. Yes. But we're not going there right now. Okay. But that's good. That's true. We, we, we can hate what's, the Bible says we should love what's good and hate what's evil. Right. Okay, so we can hate when someone is doing something, whether it's myself, the evil that I do, the sin that I do, I should hate. Right. I should always hate the thing that hurts God. Right. Anything that is sin that would separate me from God or another person from God, I should hate that thing. But I hate it because it damages God. Right. But I don't hate the person that does it. I hate what's happening okay. because because it, it it's damaging God and damaging that person. But in Luke chapter six, verse thirty five and thirty six, Jesus said, "Love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked." Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Okay. Um, if I'm going to be angry with someone, or I'm going to feel hatred towards somebody, dealing with my feelings toward them, how do I deal with those feelings? How do I deal with anger? How do I deal with with somebody who's been mean to me, who's been my enemy, who's shown unkindness. Um, I'm, my natural inclination 
is going to be to feel anger or hatred toward that person. And whether or not I'm going to give rein to those feelings and let those feelings dominate my thoughts and let those feelings determine how I'm going to react is going to be decided by whether or not I decide that that's okay or not okay. And, I, if, and the only way I'm going to decide it's not okay is if I've decided that Jesus is Lord and I want to put my trust in Jesus. If I decide in my mind that Jesus is Lord, then even though my inclination is going to be to want to hate and be angry, I'm going to make up my mind that somehow I have to figure out how to love this person. And I have to love them the way God loves them. Because God, the Bible says God is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. So we, 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 we decide in our mind that the goal for me is to get to a place in my heart where not only do I not hate or want revenge in some way, but rather I want to reach a place where I can actually feel love and mercy in my heart for them. Now, some people would say, well, that's impossible. You can't do it. But you can do it. We can do it. And the fact is that if you've ever set your mind to doing it and decided that you were going to to follow God and trust God on this matter, you'll know that it's possible because you've had a victory. Now, I, I've personally had victory in this, in my life. I've had people that were very mean to me that I hated. I mean, I, I, I mean, hated so much that I had dreams of killing them with my bare hands. When I was sleeping, of course, not when I was... <laughs> I, I didn't entertain those thoughts when I was awake. Although the thought pat crossed my mind when I was awake, it was easier to dispel it when I was awake and say, I'm not going to stay there. Okay? But in my dreams, I actually had feelings like that about certain people. And I made up my mind that that was not okay. I wasn't going to stay there. And I was going to get my brain in a place where not only did I not hate them, but I actually felt m mercy and love for that person. Now, when you think about how you're going to get to that place, one thing I believe you have to understand is that each one of us is different. Each one of us is an individual. And although God may call us all to, the, to get to the same place, no two people are necessarily going to reach that goal in the exact same way. But even though there may, we may, may not reach it in the exact same way, there are going to be certain godly principles and directives that are going to be a part of every person's mental and emotional journey to get there. Okay, there's going to be some things that we're all going to have in common. Now, one of the ways that I think every one of us is going to have to deal with if we get to that place can be found like in Romans 12, verse 2 where he says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Okay, so one of the things that we're going to have to do, if we're going to get rid of those feelings of anger and hatred, is we are going to have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to learn to think differently. We cannot follow God and be obedient to God if we refuse to change the way we think. Okay, it's not possible. If you think that you're going to say, well, I believe in Jesus and I'm saved and everything is fine, but you're not going to change anything. You're not going to change the way you think you're not going to change the way you act. If you think that's true, then I say you don't really have faith. You may say you have faith, but you don't have a living faith that the Bible talks about. Because a living faith is a faith where action takes place. Where I am going to respond in a way that God says. So I have to change. 
And in Romans 2 here, he's uh, 12 rather, he's saying specifically that I have to be transformed. I have to become a different person by the renewing of my mind. In Philippians 1 verse 9, Paul says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And Matthew 5, says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I am going to have to begin with making a decision to believe and trust in God. And the beginning of that starts in my brain. The thing that connects me with God initially by faith is something that happens in my heart. In the Bible it says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and confess with your mouth that Jesus, you know, confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So salvation, our connection with God begins in my heart. It's a heart thing. That's where it starts. Okay. But in order for me to take it anywhere, at some point I've got to I've got to shift into my brain. My brain is what makes me act differently. My heart is what causes me to believe and love. But my brain is what causes me to act differently. So I may have faith in my heart that Jesus is Lord. And I may confess with my lips and say, yes, God, I want to follow you. But at some point, my brain has to act on that. And, and, and my response to God is going to be generated more by what's going on between my ears than between my rib cage. Okay, I have to make a decision, and I've got to act on it. And this is just one, loving my enemy is just one example of that. Now the thing is, I have to realize too, that I cannot just simply tell myself to stop feeling a certain way. For instance, if I'm angry, if I'm tempted by something, I can't just say to myself, stop being angry, stop being tempted. Stop wanting this thing that God says I shouldn't have, but I want it. I can't just tell myself to stop wanting it, because it won't work. It won't work. That's what temptation is all about. Temptation is about me wanting something that's different than what God says. It means I either want to do something that he says I shouldn't do, or it means I don't want to do something that God wants me to do. But it's one of those two things. But that desire to do something different cannot be changed just by telling myself to stop feeling. Now what I can do, though, is uh, there's two things that I can do. I can use my brain to look at what I'm to, to change what I'm thinking. I can't change how I'm feeling, but I can change what I'm thinking. I can remind myself that this is not what God wants, that I know what God does want, and I'm going to stay focused in my mind on what he does want. The renewing of my mind. I am going to discipline my mind to stay focused on my thoughts, to keep my thoughts focused on what God wants. 
Now, when I keep my mind focused on what God wants, I am going to do the right thing. And that combination of focusing on what God wants, filling my thoughts with that, and acting on it in a faithful way, doing what God wants, will my heart will, will change. My heart will fall in line. But it's not going to start, the temptation is going to start in my heart. The overcoming of it is going to start in my brain. So when you say, love your enemies, it's going to start by saying, it's not okay for me to feel what I'm feeling. It's not okay for me to be angry. It's not okay for me to hold this against them. It is not okay for me to, to have these kinds of thoughts and feelings. It's not okay. I have to tell myself that. And then I have to do the right thing. Maybe I have to extend a kindness to them. The Bible says that God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. So perhaps what I'm going to do is I'm going to respond in kindness to that person. So first I'm going to think what the right thing to do is, and secondly I'm going to respond in kindness to my enemy. And the combination of those things are going to help transform me to the place where God wants me to be. So the process is going, we, we have to implement the things that the Bible says. We have to do the things that the Bible says and fill our minds with these things and act accordingly if we want to feel differently. If, however, I refuse to think differently and I refuse to do anything differently and I have these feelings that contradict what God wants, and I allow those feelings to dominate my thoughts, and I allow those thoughts to dictate my actions, then my heart, my mind, and my actions will all be aligned against God. I will be completely aligned against God, and I will live my life out, and I will do the thing that's wrong, and that will separate me from God. And it will keep me from walking with God. So if my goal is to walk in faith with God, I am going to have to align my mind, my heart, and my actions with what God says. And the more I do that, the closer I will be to God. And the more I refuse to do that, the further away I'll be to the point where I'm not with him at all. Because my whole life is devoted to just me and whatever I think and feel without any regard to God or what he's trying to tell me. I can, I can control what I allow to dominate my thoughts. Okay, I can, I do not have to think about bad things. I can throw thoughts out. I can replace them, like the Bible says, with whatever is true and noble and right and pure and lovely. I can replace bad thoughts with good thoughts. And I can get away from the things that are not good. I was just reading an article in the paper today, and they were talking about how do you deal with somebody who's mean? It was interesting because I'm doing this lesson on loving your enemies. And, and they were talking about all the different kinds of things that you can do. And one of the things it said is, just get out of there. Just get out of there. I mean, sometimes the best thing to do with temptation is just get out of it. Like Joseph, when Potiphar's wife tried to grab him. He, the temptation, he, he probably felt a lot of temptation. He felt all kinds of things. This beautiful woman, blah, 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 blah. What did he do? He was so overwhelmed with what he was feeling, he literally ran. Mm -hmm. He ran out of there mm -hmm. and put space between him and that woman. Yeah. He just had to get away from her. That was the only way he could deal with it. Mm -hmm. That was the best way. Sometimes you physically have to get out of there. 
And then a lot of the other things that this article talked about, which is varying degrees of what we're talking about here, in that they were saying how you have to think differently about it, and you have to take what the person is saying and turn it around into something different. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you can't just dwell on what it is. You have to, you have to, you have to change the thought process on it and give it back in a different form to that person if you're going to stay there. Mm -hmm. So, but either way, whether you get away from it altogether or you just change how you're thinking about it and respond with the new way of thinking, either way, you're going to have to change what's going on inside your brain. Okay, it's not just going to happen. You can't just give in to whatever it is you feel. This is not necessarily an easy task. And the thing is that especially when we try to control our thoughts, we're going to have our successes and our failures. And I'm sure every one of us can probably relate to the fact that there have been times where I have a thought that comes into my brain and I know it's not right. I know this thinking is not right, and yet I'm fighting it. And you know what? When you try to fight it, sometimes you're going to have your successes. Sometimes you're going to have your failures. Sometimes you're going to say, why can't I shake this thought? Why can't I get rid of this? You know, we saw a movie last night where, where you know, this guy, he, he wanted to move on. His wife had died, and he missed her so much. And he wanted to move on with his life. And he knew the right thing to do was to move on with his life and focus all of his energy on his kids and try to help them out and blah, 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 blah. But he had this nagging thing that kept pulling him back, pulling him back, where he kept thinking about the loss that he felt from her leaving. Now, it's understandable. I mean, he was grieving. He was grieving for his wife. But even though he knew the direction he was going to have to go in order to break through with this, it still kept grabbing hold of his brain. And he, he was frustrated with it. And he even said, you know, why can't I shake this? Why can't I shake this? Why can't I get this out of my head? And a lot of times, that's how it's going to be with temptation. Whether it's temptation toward my enemy or temptation to some other kind of sin. Sometimes I'm going to wonder, why can't I shake this? Why can't I just think about this the way God wants me to think about this? And the, and, and the answer is, God is allowing that struggle to build your character. Because that struggle and that persistence that it's going to take on our part to be successful is going to build our character. And every time we fail to shake it, and we can't shake that thought, we can't shake that temptation, it reminds us how weak we are. It reminds us how little faith we have on our own. It reminds us how much we need a Savior. It reminds us how much we need brothers and sisters to help us. Because we don't have it in us to do the right thing. We can't do it alone. There are some things we have to, we have to focus on our thoughts, controlling our thoughts, getting in line with God, acting the right way, but we also have to depend on God to show us mercy and grace. And we need to find encouragement from brothers and sisters who will build us up and strengthen us and give us the encouragement to do the right thing. When we're feeling thoughts, if I'm feeling a thought, for instance, if, of, of hating my enemy, I remember one time there was this person that I was working with. He's very mean. He's very hateful. And I remember I had two brothers that were living with me. I was single at the time. And I was living with two Christian brothers. And I remember coming home one night and talking with them about how I was feeling and how mean this person was and how it was a side to me that just wanted to, 
just punch him, you know, or do something terrible to him. <coughs> and and my brothers said to me, "Bro, what are you what are you talking about? What are you thinking? You can't think like that. You can't be like that. You 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 know this is not what God wants you to be." And they spurred me on. They encouraged me to think the right way. And they encouraged me to be faithful. And we ended up talking about it and reading scriptures about it and praying together about it. <coughs> and it strengthened me. And it helped me to deal with it better and to get my brain and my actions where I needed it to be. Mm. I needed those guys in my life. Mm. To help me to get through that. Not all the people in my life were doing just the opposite. If I wanted to do something that was contrary to what God was saying, and all I had was a bunch of worldly friends around me that were just encouraging me to do it, just encouraging me, well, you're right, he is a jerk. You know, let's go and, you know, slice his tires on his truck. You know, let's, let, let's find out where he lives and, you know, we'll jump him in a dark alley and beat the crap out of him. What if that was my friends? Well, not only would I have hurt that other person, but I would have hurt God. I would have hurt my relationship with God. So when we're faced with temptation, it's, you know, we need our Savior. We need mercy. We need forgiveness. We need God's word to know what, how we should be thinking. And we need Christian brothers and sisters in our lives to spur us on to do the right thing. We need the full armor of God. God gives us an armor to fight this battle with, to fight this battle of sin with. And we can't go in there with a pea shooter. We got to go in there with everything that God gives us. The helmet, the breastplate of salvation, the sword of truth, the blah, 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 blah. All the things that God talks about. And all of these things that we're talking about are all things that God gives us to be able to deal with this stuff. He says, above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multiple, a multitude of sins. That's in 1 Peter 4, verse 8. <clears throat> we have to be resolute that nothing short of God's command is going to be okay with us. And we have to realize that we are flesh and blood sinners in need of a Savior too. So when we're tempted to hate that person, when we're tempted to give in to temptation, we need to realize that this person that we're hating, this person that we're feeling this way about, <laughs> they're flesh and blood, and they have their problems, and they need mercy and grace just like we do. And we need to show the same kindness to them that God gives to us. Because here's the reality. The reality is that we're enemies of God. That there are times where before we were saved, we lived as enemies of the cross. We did not live as people that loved God. We lived as enemies of the cross. That's how we lived. And even now, when we choose to live and act in a blatantly sinful <coughs> way, we are living in that moment as an enemy of God. <coughs> and yet we still want God to show us kindness. We still want God to show us mercy. Even while we're being sinful, we want him to show us kindness and mercy. And God is saying, you know what? I want you to do the same thing with your enemy. Because you've been my enemy and I showed you kindness and grace. Now you go and you show your, your enemy kindness and grace. And we need to be grateful for the way God continues to love us in spite of our sin. But we also need to not use that as an excuse to keep sinning. We need to use that as a reason to turn it around and stop and do the right thing. We should never give up, and we will have success if we don't give up. 
If we determine in our mind that I will think about this right, I will get this right. I will think about it right. I will love that person in my heart, and I will do the right thing. I will focus on what's good, pure, righteous, blah, blah, blah. I will do the things that God tells me to do. I make up my mind that I'll think the way God wants me to think. I will act the way God wants me to act. And I will surround myself with with God's spirit, God's word, and God's people to help me to be successful. And when I do that, I am going to be successful. And I will love my enemies. And I will do good to them. And I will show them mercy and grace the same way God has shown to me. So, amen. That's the lesson, guys. Bye. Very good.